welcome to Hidden Treasures, a program where we clarify our doubts that come across our mind when we read the Holy Bible or when we listen to the Holy Word. We have with us a very renowned Bible scholar and scripture professor, Reverend Dr. Michael Kadimitum, and we are happy because with his profoundity of knowledge and depth and the wealth of experience, certainly he will clarify the doubts that we raise or that come to our mind when we read the Holy Bible. Father, we are very happy to have your presence with us today and we move on to our first question for this episode. The previous episode we have been taking Gospel of John, the Resurrection account. And the Gospel of John, we find the character Peter, of course, we find in all the Gospels. But something special about him is this. Jesus came, makes his appearance in Galilee, and he doesn't probably recognize him or realize that it was Jesus. And then later he realizes, and he was stripped for the fishing, therefore he was not in the proper clothes. He put on the clothes when John tells him the Lord is here. But then the question Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? Perhaps you'll be wondering why this doubt about these questions because his strong point is actually faith. Who do you say that I am? And he declared his faith. Flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but the Heavenly Father has revealed that to you. So Peter's strong point is actually faith. Whereas a question now he's asking is not that. Not that do you believe in me, do you believe me? Rather, do you love me? And that to three times. And in connection with that, has these three questions any connection with the denial that he made? Because he denied him three times. Is it because, for the ordinary man he asked that question, is it because he denied three times and therefore want to make sure that whether he really loved him as a reparation or as a, what they call, uh, to make up for all that he did earlier as a denial? Father, how do we clarify this and the speciality of this character because he's quite impetuous in many of the situations and he jumps into conclusions very fast and he suffered also for the same. Uh, something about the Gospel of John. So the whole thing you are speaking about comes in the 21st chapter. And Bible scholars say this 21st chapter is rather spurious. Um, would you please take chapter 20? Uh, chapter 20... Uh, the last words seems to conclude the gospel. Verses 30 and 31. 20, 30, 31. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe and that Jesus, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. It could very well be the conclusion of the gospel. Yes. In fact, there are many manuscripts in which the 21st chapter is not found, some ancient manuscripts. As we uh, taught, said in relation to the gospel of Mark, yeah, 16, Mark 19, chapter 16, 19, 9 to 20. 20, so also the 21st chapter of John, seems to be of a later addition, at least it is addition to, because there is a, first there is a conclusion here, and then the lack of this um, chapter in many ancient manuscripts make people conclude that this was added later. Even though it is done, but it is considered as a uh, authentic, canonical uh, scripture, because there is, uh, the church accepts this as the part of the, the, um, the gospel, gospel of John. So that is one thing. Now, so the, the chapter 20 concludes with the emphasis on faith. That's what you said. Um, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And that believing you may have life. life in his name. So emphasis on faith. And as you rightly um, say, the next focus is not faith, it's of love. So here, the 21st chapter is of, uh, pointing on a different topic. And see how it begins. It begins with a shattered community. In chapter 21, if you can read the first three uh, verses, chapter 21, 1 to 3. After this, Jesus revealed himself again 
to, his, to the disciples by the sea of Tiberias. And he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. This is a very strange thing. The Simon Peter, uh, when he came first to Jesus, he was brought by Andrew. And there Jesus looked in his face and said, you are called Simon, but you'll be called Peter. And now this Peter was supposed to be holding the community together. And Jesus had already foretold, Simon, Satan has tried to um, tempt you, to swift you like uh, the shaft. Yeah, yeah. And I have prayed that your faith may not um, perish. And when you return, bring the others back. He said, no, whatever may happen, I will not. Even if all others deny you, I will not deny you. So it's a comparison. There is a kind of, I believe in you strong. And this person who said, I will not believe, uh, um, I, betray, believe. I will not uh, abandon you, will not leave you, he is the very person who takes the people back to Galilee, back to the lake, back to the boat. And there were 12. And here we are reduced to number 7. One Judas, One yeah, Judas, Judas uh, deserted and he went. What happened to the other four? We don't know. So the, the 12, the group is broken. And now they have never supposed to go back to the, the boat and nets. The very thing Peter is doing, not only doing, he is taking others also with him. A ringleader who deserts Christ, who deserts Jerusalem, who abandons everything and returns to the same trade. As if the whole project of the kingdom of God Jesus had started has been cancelled. Mm -hmm. So it has been days past. They have already had the experience. Jesus had called them. Jesus had given them the spirit. Everything is done in chapter 20 we hear. And then even including Thomas who said, you are the Christ, the Lord, Lord and God. Now these seven people go out. So we are in a very critical situation, the crisis. The crisis the church is going through. The crisis that the church is somehow denying, renouncing Christ and going their way, going back to fishing. And Peter is in front. So you should see the, the seriousness of the situation that John is presenting. So the chapter 21 is presenting a totally different context. A context when the church is threatened from inside. Not from by persecution, but from the lack of faith. And the, here the, the 12, these are the 12 communities broken. There is no more 12, only 7 and they are going back fishing. And then comes the tragedy. They fish the whole night, nothing happens. Caught nothing. They caught nothing. And this will be repeated again, nothing. And the morning, they see, so we continue to read. Yeah, yeah. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in for the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his clothes, for he was stripped for work, and sprang into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. Okay, this is one thing again. First they went, deserting the, the, the yeah. call they had, and they caught nothing, emptiness. And then Jesus appears in the early morning, they, they did not recognize yeah. him. Jesus asked, do you have anything? No. Nothing. Answer is always no. They do not have anything, they don't recognize anything. And even when Jesus tells them uh, and he gets a fish, Peter doesn't understand. A person who doesn't realize. But only one disciple whom Jesus loved, second the question of love, he realizes that it is Jesus. 
So then there is something that changes. So Jesus meets them again on the shore. Again he starts the same miracle. As we, as we said already with the Gospel of Matthew, return to Galilee. Yeah, no, yeah. It is in the Gospel of Luke, it is said, chapter 5, 1 to 11, that before they were called, before they abandoned everything, they had a miraculous draught of fish. So the same thing is repeated here. Maybe the same episode or the repetition of the same thing. So they are catch fish, then their mission is now successful. And a net full of fish becomes a sign for the disciple to see this is Jesus. So Peter's eyes are still closed. He had his faith, but somehow yeah, he didn't yeah, understand. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Then he you know, jumps into the water and he goes, and please continue. When they got out of the land, uh, 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 they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire there with a fish lying on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net in shore, full of large fish, 153 of them, and although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. So here is a kind of revelation again. So Jesus is on the on the shore. Peter comes, and surprising what he finds on the shore. I remember a long time ago I was doing the Bible comics. Um, as I, I had a 15 booklets on the life of Jesus. And I was wondering, so for each booklet I was giving a title page, a cow, cow picture. So that cow picture would somehow uh, contain the content yeah. of the book. And I was wondering what picture should I leave for the children? As Jesus leaving up the last, last scene. What should be the picture that should remain in the mind of children about Jesus? And this came to my mind. And this is the picture I had put with us forever. So Jesus is at the shore early morning, cooking fish and taking coffee, making coffee, something like bread. And my um, imagination is, the question is, who gets up early morning and prepares the food? And the question he asked, children, have you got something? See, this is the mother's picture. Jesus the incarnation of God gives the last image that should stay in your mind is that of a mother. A mother who welcomes the children, a mother who waits for the children who are at, uh, at work and the mother knows they got nothing. They had been working all night and were totally disappointed. Nothing. So she prepares the food and waits for So is Jesus. And when they come, no question is asked. Yeah, where were you? Why did you do that? You are the one who said you will die for me. And what did you do? All of you, deserters, unfaithful, absolute nothing. They may have all, were or afraid. What will the master say? Nothing. And what does the master say? Come and eat. Bring something of your food also. So participate. So some fresh me, um, f um, food, uh, fish that you have brought in. And so prepare. they prepared. So that is the beginning, beginning of a reconciliation, a new beginning. As in the Gospel of Matthew, going to Galilee, now in the Gospel of John, Jesus is beginning all over again. Let us start all over. Let us forget what has passed. And what is important is not so much what you did, but you are. And now comes the question. The question that Peter was fearing and it came in a totally different way. And normally you would say, what, man, what did you do with me? You were so courageous, and now, no, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And see, when they had, so would you just read also the following 15 to 20, 19? 
When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, I say to you, when you were young, you girded yourself and walked where you would. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish to go. This he said to show by what death he was to glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. Okay, this is the encounter. The question is very, very interesting. Uh, the first question Jesus asks, so the John tells, when they had finished breakfast, mm -hmm. Jesus said to Simon Peter, and see how Jesus addresses him, Simon, son of, son of John, doesn't say the word Peter. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And there is an implication to this. What does it mean more than these? The food, the, the, the board, the material things? Or these disciples? What would you think? These? Everything, for a normal understanding, everything together. I think there is more. Even if all deny you, I will not. Jesus said, all of you will deny you, deny me. Even if all, I will not. That means I am more than the others. So here, the question should be, do you love me more than these? Would mean, do you love me more than these people do love me? Do you have a greater love, love than, than these people, people who have, have for me? Not that you love them. So the, the implication is, you said you will not deny me even if all. So that means you meant that you will love. So is that love you so great? You, do you love me? A poet, Peter has no doubt, Master, you know I love you. Then he gives the chance. So you be, feed my sheep. Then the second question, he doesn't ask, do you love me more? The question is, do you, you love, love me? me. So that more, the comparison is left. Now comes to the question, love. And Peter says, do you, lo you love me? Then the third question, again, do you love me? So now we have to go back to the Greek. In English, all the six, Jesus' three questions and Peter's three answers, all with the same word, love. But in Greek, it's different. In Greek, Jesus is asking the first time the word agapao. Yeah, agapao. Agapao. Agapao is love. That is a divine love. Agapao is a love that doesn't expect anything in return. Unconditional love. Unconditional love, total surrender. That is the love of a divine love. And so that is a real love. And Peter is using another word, philane. Yes. So you could say, uh, Jesus is asking, do you love me? Of course, Master, I like you. So love and likeness. So that is a philane, it's a physical, um, material uh, love between friends. Philadelphia. Brotherly love, okay. So we are speaking on two level, different levels. Jesus is speaking on a divine level and Peter is on so a brother, uh, yeah. human level. So first the comparison was down. So again, Jesus is asking the same agapao and Peter repeats the same. He doesn't any change. And then the third time, the first time was the comparison, second time without the comparison. And the third time, Jesus is changing the word. So third time Jesus is asking the question, not with agapao, but with philane. So Jesus comes down to the level of Peter. Yes, Peter, do you really like me? Is it true that what you're saying? That's when Peter breaks down. So, the, so there is an implication, at least in the, in the redaction of John, where how John is presenting, um, Peter is really now confronted with his heart. All that I am saying, is it really true? Jesus is really questioning, are you really in love with me? Do you? 
now he has nothing to say he breaks down that is real contrition that is real confrontation of one's own self who am i really i am a weak person lord you know who i am this is what i can do you may expect more but i am only this you know my whole self you know my heart i do love you so i surrender there is no more pride in there there is no comparison with others and there is no kind of yeah, i am there no i really come from my own self a poor sinner as pope francis tell it so the journalist asked pope francis do you th- what do you say about yourself i am a sinner redeemed by christ that's what peter comes to i am a sinner whom god loves and redeems so there he starts not at the peak of his faith not at the peak of his pride comparing with others and i am better now right at the bottom you come to realize that you are a sinner that you have betrayed that you have gone away now jesus comes so you realize that and still you love so there is sincerity in that there is humility in that there is truth in that and so jesus is telling okay feed my flock so it is true peter's faith is taken of course peter has to keep the people in faith but more is a love and that is what the church is gradually realizing recognizing there was a time when the faith was the most important dogmatic affirmation and there came also the the time of inquisition and torture mm-hmm. and all this gradually we come to realize the uh, the orthodoxy is important of course but love is more important and the present pope is doing all exactly that and i think what is jesus is telling and what john is telling us so the church should be based on love a love as, as paul in the letter to the corinthians speaks about a love that forgives a love that is ready to take doesn't keep any offense a love that is faithful and accepts everybody ready to forgive and also becomes aware of one's own weaknesses and that is what jesus said he loved us to the end that's what how it is said in uh, gospel of john chapter 13 he loved to the end so jesus is the manifestation of the endless infinite love of god love became man love took flesh so in order to follow in order to understand jesus what is important is this love so peter did not succeed in reaching up to the level of agapao but he is still on the search and i think that's what jesus is telling try to open your heart try to understand how god loves you and respond to it of course you will fail fall down but don't compare yourself with others don't think you are the only one who is that's what elijah did in fact elijah was in the in on mount horeb hiding in the in the cave and god appeared and elijah what are you doing here a oh, lord i am burning with the zeal for the the god of israel because everybody has abandoned you all have deserted you i am the only one remaining faithful at the end god said no you are not the one and 7000 people there are who would not bend their knee before but so don't think you are the most important person cut yourself to size even peter should think that he is not the most important thing unless christ upholds him he can also fail so humility accepting one's own nature one's own frailty at the same time depending on god and that's what love means accepting who you are and confessing it not pretending to be ready take off the mask you cannot wear a mask before god that's what you call the hypocrisy mm-hmm. so peter should not be a hypocrite should accept the fact and that's for everybody and i think that is the lesson john is giving or jesus is giving through the gospel of john and so this should be the basis of feeding the flock love 
So Peter is presented as the shepherd of the, the universal church. And but this is also valid for everybody who is in care of the others. A teacher for the disciples, for a parent for the children, and anybody. So this is the basis. Love as I loved you. Thank you so much, Father, because this particular subject is very enlightening because the question very often we take it to be just the question of do you love me? But as you explained it very well, what matters is not the peak of faith, if that be Peter had said it earlier. Not at the comparison that he should be claiming that, you know, I love you better than the others love you. But it is a question, as you said very well, with this he confronted his reality that is a sinner and he's not, has, he has not come up to the level of the agape love. And that's a criteria for any mission at all. And as you said, even for the church today. And churches come to that realization very strongly through the words of Holy Father. As you said, I'm a sinner redeemed by Christ. Which would mean, as you said, for any mission, any way where you're put to, love matters. It's a love that makes you understand and proceed with that. And that's a question Jesus places before Peter, make him aware of his limitation and then know what he is with the humility and acceptance. Thank you so much, Father. I hope you enjoyed this particular episode because here is something that we need to understand in a greater way and it's also a lesson to put into practice for each one of us in the daily circumstances of life, whether as a parent or a teacher or a nurse or engineer or maybe a priest, whatever, be the mission. And thank you for being with us. We hope to see you next week at the same time. If you have any questions, please do send those questions in the following email address you find on the screen. Till next week, bye-bye. Please stay blessed. God bless you all.